my YouTube channel. Today, I will be discussing the topic on courting God's way. Um, before I get started, letting y'all know um, about how to court God's way. Um, I just want you to know that this is just talking about courting God's way. I'm not trying to give you advice um, about your marriage or anything like, like that. Um, I'm not married, but um, I just want you to know how to sustain a marriage doing things God's way, living for God, being rooted and grounded in his word. So I want to point out first, before I get started, that a lot of women and men, but mostly women, a lot of y'all are wondering why you are going through so much hell and uh, bad things, relationship not working out, men not doing right, uh, brokenness, hurt, need healing, all that kind of thing. You actually did things on your own. You set that foundation for yourself. And you wonder why it's not going right because God was not in it in the first place. Um, you allow this man to treat you any kind of way. Um, you're moving too fast. You're not getting to know him first. Um, and it's, I want to say this, that it is so, it is more um, baby showers than there are weddings. Because women, we have to take responsibility. It's what we allow. Men only do what we allow. So you wonder why this not working out. Because uh, you don't have a relationship yourself with God. You have to be rooted and uh, grounded in God. You need to learn how to be content in your singleness. And if you are in a bad relationship, and if it's not from God, you need to let that go. You need to let that man go his own way. Because the man is the leader. And not only is he provide, he's the leader. He needs to be seeking God. He needs to have his vision. You know, He needs to know... Uh, do this man have a vision? But this is why y'all relationships are not working out. This is the reason why y'all, uh, it's a lot of um, broken relationships. It's a lot of heartbreak, headaches. You're dealing with that, and, you know, you, you that makes you bitter, and it makes you be negative, and you think all men are the same or like that. You don't believe that there's godly men out here. You don't believe that there is a good, sustainable relationship that's built on uh, godly standards. single people, but this is also for you people who are in a relationship that's not rooted and grounded in God. So I want to first say this, that uh, my key point is that, um, like I said, if you're single or in a bad relationship, first you need to, uh, I got my notes right here, first you need to live a strong life chasing God, being content in your singleness. You need to know who you are and whose you are in Christ, knowing your worth, chasing God, really devoted to him. Serving ch your church and also your community and finding your God-given purpose. You need to be walking in purpose. You need to be so uh, content with God. I mean, you need, you need to fall in love with God. You need to just focus on what God called you to do. Love. I love the story of Ruth. I was just reading that. Ruth was so devoted. She was loyal and faithful to her mother-in-law, Naomi, and she was faithful to God. She was devoted to God. She loved God. Ruth was not worried about uh chasing a man. She wasn't worried about a man. She didn't love God to get a man. That's another thing, too. You cannot chase God or pray to God just to get things when you're not obeying God. When you don't love him, you just want his hand and not his heart. So, again, I'm going to refer back to Ruth. Ruth was so loyal, and she was in love with God. Like, when I say she worked in Boaz field, she was so worried about her work, her performance. She was worried about doing things right, doing things God's way. She didn't care about what was going on in the world, what was going on uh, to her left or her, or her right. She wasn't worried about other people. She wasn't trying to keep up with the Joneses or, you know, or anybody like that. Ruth was just so focused. She was so, she loved Naomi. She loved God. She was obedient. She did everything Naomi told her to. Um, so um, what captured her was Boaz saw the fruit because you have to bear the fruit of the spirit. The fruit of the spirit is love, patient, kind, meekness, self, self control, temperance, or that. So you have to be rooted in God and bearing the fruit of the spirit because the fruit of the spirit was show. So um, uh, Boaz was attracted to that. She was so content. And so they end up, in the end of the story, they end up uh, living a successful, godly life. They had God in the root of it. So, uh, like, I'm, like I was saying, that you have to be rooted. Just use Ruth's uh, story as. 
read Doug D. did some research on the book of Ruth. Please read it. I advise. I highly recommend that y'all read the book of Ruth. So that can be a reflection on your life. So with that being said, So you need to be preparing yourself. That means, uh, ladies, do you know how to cook? You know, do you know how to clean? Um, do you know how to um, do white things? Like, like preparing yourself, what I mean, doing white things. As in, you're not entertaining other men. Like, you're not um, chasing other men or talking to another guy to fill that void until your husband do come. You can't do that. You can't be in and out of bed with another guy playing uh, friends with benefits. That, that, it doesn't work like that. That's not godly at all. So you cannot do those things to fill that void until your husband come. No, you need to shut all that down. You need to not uh, answer to every DM, every uh, text call, if they have your number or whatever. You do not need to entertain uh, every time somebody say cute things or uh, loving things to you, such as like, you're beautiful and all those kind of things. That does not mean that's your husband. That does not mean that you entertain that because they saying all this good stuff, things that we want to hear. So... You need to be prepared. You need to shut that down. You need to show that you are wise. You need to respect yourself as well. You need to have respect. So that means setting boundaries already. That means that uh, you need to uh, be off the phone, off the phone at a certain distance and time. That means that um, you need to not be allowing men in your house. Don't don't invite people to your house. You need to get to know people. So let me uh, continue on. I'm going a little further. I'm going too far. Let me bring it back a little bit. Let me bring it back. So, with this being said, um, so what I'm saying is, oh my gosh, I'm sorry. Uh, another key point, um, when you are dating, courting, I'm going to use courting because that's biblical. Courting is biblical, dating is what man made up. But when you're courting, um, you need to lay, you both need to, it's in. Um, when you're dating, courting, when y'all out on dates, wherever y'all at, y'all need to have, uh, y'all need to learn how to communicate. You have to communicate. You guys need to, uh, it is important that y'all communicate everything. Ladies, you need to ask, ask every question possible. Ask a lot of, I'm not going to say every question because you can't, you know, ask every question in one night. What I'm trying to say is you need to ask as much questions as possible. You do not need to leave that table or wherever y'all at that night confused or something left blank. You need to know. You need to know where y'all heading. You need to ask him questions like, where did he see himself in the next few years? What is he looking for? What is his purpose? That means, uh, does he want to be married? Do he see a future with you? Do he uh, want kids? You know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, uh, not only that, like, purpose as in, you know, um, what is God calling him to do? You know, things of that nature. Do he believe in the Bible? Uh, do he... Um, love God? Do he, do he have a prayer life? You need, that is so important. He needs to love God more than he loves you, ladies. So, you need to, he needs, he, you need to ask, does he, um, you know, uh, do he believe in bearing the fruit of the Spirit? You, you need to know that. You need to know that uh, this man is bearing the fruit of the Spirit. He needs to have a heart. Love is patient. Patient is love. So, he needs to be patient. You need to know if he's patient or not. Um, you can give him scenarios. Give him a scenario. Ask him questions. Just be like, you know, if what if things go wrong, you know, like if you lose your job or if, um, you know, uh, we have trials and tribula tribulations because uh, that's a, another part of the uh, bearing the fruit of the spirit is long suffering. You're going to go through some things, so he needs to know how to handle that. You need to ask him, who do he go to when those things happen? How do he act? Pay attention to his characteristics. Ask him, how do he handle hard times, hardships? He needs to, uh, he needs to uh, uh, answer with, he go to God. You know, you want somebody to go to God, he go to God for everything and not go run into his mother, his dad, or his friends because they are not the one who you run to when you're going through hardship. It is God. God is the center of the, uh, in the center of the relationship. Do he understand the power of the Holy Ghost? Does he have the Holy Ghost? Does the Spirit live in him? Do he have a vision? Do he have a purpose? What is he looking for out of this? And if he's confused, and if he can't answer this in the way that it should be answered, which is godly principles and using God in the center of it, then that man is not for you. Do not pursue that relationship. I'm telling y'all to split from that. I'm trying to save you from heartbreak. You do not want to be hurt. That is not the purpose. That is not the ultimate goal at all. So, ladies, y'all need to make sure that this man is rooted and grounded in God. And another thing, when you are dating and courting, 
Make sure you are setting boundaries. That is so important. Do y'all not know that um, uh, uh, not setting boundaries and you end up going into, let's be honest, sex without marriage. Do y'all know how much danger that causes in a relationship? Do y'all know that, that soul ties are not easily broken? The Bible even said to uh, call on God while he's near before you fall into them temp temp before you fall into them temptations. Because it's not easy broken and you don't want that because what you're doing is you first you're, you're saying that I'm not worthy enough because I allowed this to happen. And not only that, um you're not um what I'm trying to say, I'm sorry, I lost I'm, I lost uh, focus, I'm sorry. Basically what you're saying is you're not worthy. Um you don't know your self worth. I don't know who I belong to. Um, you basically saying that you're weak because that's what it is. Let's just be honest. You're weak. Um, I didn't have no self control. And another thing, you need to have accountability. You need to be a, be have the right people in your circle. Not only, I mean, not only in your circle, but also in your corner. You need to have counseling, kind of accountability. You know, going to church people. You know, uh, uh, having someone to pray with you and for you. You need that. When you in dating, you know, courting or whatever you're doing. So, um, and another thing, um, men only do what you allow them to do. Uh, also, um, another key point, um, another key point is uh, that, what was I saying? I'm sorry. I, I lost uh, focus. I was in it good. I'm sorry. Um, another his relationship with his family, uh, noticing in how he treats his family. That's another sign because how you treat your mother, you would treat someone else like that. So um, also, if you want kids with God, make sure kids with God, make sure you're with the right person because think about it. Can your kids look like him? And I'm not talking about just physically. I'm talking about spiritually and mentally. You know, y'all both need to raise Using biblical principle, making sure y'all both believe in the Bible, because you don't want your kids confused, growing up confused. You know, you don't want your kids saying, "Well, my mama was saving my daddy. What my mama told me to do this, but my daddy told me to do this," and that's confusing the kids. You gotta make sure y'all talk about things like that. And I know some of you women already have children, some men already have children. And if you decide, you know, you don't want no kids, you just want to be married, y'all just have blended families, then that's okay. I'm not, you know, really talking to you. I'm talking to the ones that don't have kids or if they do have kids, want kids at this moment. Uh, making sure that everybody's on the same page. Y'all both on the same page. You don't want to be confused. You don't want to be in a relationship that's not rooted and grounded in Christ because it's going to be hard. Think about it. A man that's not godly. Okay, think about it. You want to listen to a worship song, but he want to listen to secular music. That's going to cause an argument. And he want to watch... That's, uh, you know, godly or uh, something like married at first sight, things of the nature. You don't want to watch that. That's going to cause confusion. Confusion. Um, you want to watch, um, um, or it can be like if he the type to go to the club or it can be anything like that. And you don't believe in it. Or if he drink or anything, you don't believe in it. And you don't want that in your house. Baby, that's not going to work. First, you need to get yourself right with God. You need to be rooted and grounded in God. You need to love God for God. Because God knows the motives of our heart. He knows who wants him truthfully. Rooted and grounded in him, and he knows who don't. So, I'm telling you right now that um, you really need to be seeking God for everything. Um, and not just to get something out of it. You need to really understand salvation. Because tomorrow is not... What if you don't get these things? Would you still live for God? Think about that. You need to ask yourself that. Ladies, you need to also do self-assessment. Are you ready spiritually? Because uh, a man don't only need to just provide. He needs to be the leader, the head of the house. That's how. I, that's a godly relationship. He needs to uh, lead y'all. He needs to know where he's going. Why would you want to follow somebody who don't know where they're going? And ladies, you need to know your worth. Stop selling for less. Stop selling with these that that doesn't care that don't love you you are loved your identity is found in christ and not in man 
A man do not validate you. A man cannot fill your void or every void. Only God can. So you first need to know who you are in Christ, knowing your purpose, walking in your purpose, before you can pursue a relationship. he's ready for a relationship or if he just want friends or if he just also uh, or if he just want to be your friend or if um he uh just looking to be loved and and can't dish out love so you need to be careful of that too and just because um this man pray and he go to church and all that kind of stuff and he seem godly or he got a little I mean, everybody is not for you. You can only be with one person. So just because he is godly, that doesn't mean that that's the man God has for you. So you need to be discerning. You need to be you need to be in prayer at all times. You need to pray in the spirit. You need to ask God for discernment. You need to pray as much as you can. You need to spend as much time as you can with God. And not only are you praying, you need to be talking, doing the praying. You need to be listening. That's a lot. Another thing. And if you don't know what to say in prayer, the Bible says to let God intercede on your behalf. Let God give you what to say because you're not going to always know what to say. You need to listen to God and just let him intercede. Just open your mouth and say, God, intercede on my behalf. And allow the word to flow organically. So if you are, uh, if you are uh, in a relationship and that's not who God wants you with, you need to cut that off. And if you are heartbroken, ladies, I'm talking to you, if you are heartbroken, bitter, negative, you know, you don't think there's good men out here, then this, you can tune in on this. I want this for everybody to hear, but if you are that, that relationship you need to go get healed you need deliverance deliverance is real baby and it is time for you to be delivered you need to focus on god i know you probably wonder why i keep saying it but this is very very important it is not time for you to be dating because for one you don't need to be going into no new relationship with old baggage you cannot treat this guy i mean well you cannot uh take take it out on this new guy uh from what your past your your past does not dictate understand boundaries you know um, what you allowing and what you receiving as well um you, you don't need to pursue that new relationship because as soon as that man do something that you don't like or you feel that he kind of did something with the past did, then you're gonna shut down and you're gonna retaliate on him taking it out on him when he wasn't the one who hurt you in the first place in the new relationship so you don't need to carry them old baggage. That's not healthy at all. That is not healthy at all. And you need to respect yourself before you enter into a relationship. You need to also respect yourself, not to even enter into one until you are whole. You need to be whole in Christ. I know I keep saying it, but you do. This is very, very important. You need to be whole with yourself. You need to uh, love on yourself continually. You can do life on your own and pursue your purpose without a mate. That's not... I mean, God set the standards of that. That marriage does come from God. He wants you to be married. God wants you married more than you want to be married. He the one who set this. He the one who created marriage. He the one who created everything. He wants y'all to have an abundant life. He wants you to be married. Because he know human flesh. He know how weak we are. He know that we need him. You need God. You, can't, you don't have the power to do this on your own, sister. So you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit, the Spirit that lives in you. You need to be uh, led by the Holy Spirit and not by your emotions or your flesh. Because that's going to lead you down a destructive pathway. 
That's not going to get you anywhere. And you're going to continue to keep reaping the cycle. The cycle is going to keep going on and on. It's going to keep going on and on. And it's not going to stop until you get right with God. I don't care what nobody says. You need to get right with God. God can only feel that for you. He the only one that can break chains. He, chain, he the only one that can break bondages. Because that's what it is. You're living in bondage. And you need to be broken from that. You can't speak from a broken heart and expect to go into relationships or expect God to bless this relationship or expect God to hear your prayers. Your prayers are in vain if you live it like this. God hears the cries of the righteous, the just. And I'm not saying he don't hear your prayers, but he, it's not going to get answered. It's not going to be a yes. He answers prayers, but it's not going to be a yes. He can't bless you. You can't even, you're so blind, you can't even see the vision he's giving you. So why would he show you something when you're going to break it? You're not going to follow his lead. You're not going to be obedient to it. So why would God give you something that's so pure, something that's so righteous, when you're not right yourself, baby? You need to get understanding from God and not understand. That's another thing that's not taught. When people say get understanding, you're getting understanding from God. You need to allow God to work on your heart before pursuing a relationship. And stop allowing any and every man in your life because you're bored and lonely. That is not healthy. That's not get out of there. Get out of that mindset. Ask God to shift your perspective. You're, you need to shift your thinking. You need to, you need to ask God to renew your mind. And set it on things that are above, which is him. Things, things are uh, that are in heaven and not on earth. Because this is temporary where we live at right now. Heaven is our home. And we don't know when we're going to go out. We don't know when judgment day is going to come back. He might come back before, he even before we all die. Who knows? We don't know. Only he knows it. Only God the Father knows it. So you need to be preparing now. You need to give your life to Christ. And don't worry about a man. So ladies, do yourself a favor. Be set free. Be set free from bondage. Be set free from worldly desires and pleasures. Because that is not of the Lord. That is of the devil. And the devil is having a field day with you. And you don't want that. Because the devil don't care nothing about you. You are loved. God is loved. And he loves you. He is waiting on you to return to him. God loves you. He loves you. And don't let nobody ever think that he doesn't. And just because it feels like God's not there, baby, he is there. You just have to continue to keep seeking him. You need to get in the word. It's not about just praying. You need to know him. How are you going to know his voice if you're not in the word? You have to get in the word. And love God for who he is. your mind renew your strength ask him to make your pathway straight you need to be honest with him that you don't understand that you don't know how to pray you have to be honest let it all out you have to confess every sin everything that you're feeling to him in order for him to break anything off for him to break them bondage for in order for him to take you to another level you have to be honest with god confess it give your life to him now before it's too late. Tomorrow is not promised. So I'm going to leave y'all with this. Being okay with being single is not a curse. There's nothing wrong with being is nothing wrong with being single. It is a blessing on both sides, single and marriage. So be okay. And also, you worried about the one, you need to also be the one. So you need to go work on you. And stop thinking that it's something wrong with submitting to a man. Submission, submission and control is two different things. Submission is in the Bible for you to submit. It's 
Ladies, you submit to your husband as unto the Lord, as he submit to God. It is God, man, and then you ladies, and then your kids. So you need to learn how to submit. So a lot of you ladies are so independent where, you know, if a man, you know, you know, when it's time to submit, if they, you know, say something or, you know, God got me a vision or if they telling you to do something, really asking you. I don't want to say telling you what to do because that's kind of sounding control. But if he asks you to do something, you submit to that. Don't be giving him, don't nag him, don't do that to him. Because it's submissive. How are you going to want something God's way when you don't want to submit? You think you can do everything on your own because that's what you've been doing. You're thinking that uh, this can't happen because of your past, because of what you've been dealing with. with. When that can be broken, that can be set free as well. well. You don't, you got to, you come in with the wrong mind frame. That's why I said you need to ask God to renew your thinking. You need to be renewed, transformed. That's the only way that's going to help if you be transformed. There's nothing wrong with a man helping you. And pride is sin. That's a pride for heart. Pride for heart leads to destruction. Pride for heart, that is destruction. That is destruction. That's a sin. So you need to let that down. Let it down, baby. Let it down. So, okay. Um, all right. So I'm glad that y'all tuned in. I really hope that this helped. Um, I, I like, I'm, I'm truly serious with this, y'all. I, I really hope that this touched home run. It is a lot, a lot of, um, so many baby showers. So many ladies are pregnant and not with a man having sex invite me into the house that's not that's not of god that's that's not boundaries oh god it, it, it's a lot it's a lot of that going on and it's ridiculous so i really hope that this helped i really want you all to be set free from this and i'm praying that this turn your life around make some changes i'm praying that you really this is heavy on your heart to go and read the Bible starting today. Seeking God. You can accept Christ right now in your house. You can accept Christ anywhere. But make sure you get connected to a church. Get under the right leadership. Making sure that you are uh, finding different life groups, ministries, whatever. Finding your purpose. It'll be worth your while because you it's somebody that is waiting on, waiting on you on the other side of your yes to God. Say yes to God. It is somebody waiting on you to be set free from bondage. If you think you don't matter, you do matter. We all matter. So ladies, babies, men, whoever hear this, see this uh, YouTube live, make sure y'all take heed to this. You want to let y'all go? Thank y'all for joining. God bless y'all. God loves you like crazy. I love you. If I didn't, I probably wouldn't be doing this. So I love you. God loves you. Um, I will be back. Um, I will be seeking God. Um, so yeah, that's it. God bless y'all. Y'all take care. Bye.